All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at something a little more technical. So I just upgraded my computer to a new NVIDIA 4090 graphics card, and that replaces my 2080 Ti. So it's a couple of generations. What I wanted to do was make a video that showcased some benchmark testing for this graphics card against the old one on some applications that are common for a 3D artist. Things like Blender, Maya, Substance Painter, Nuke, and uh, Adobe Premiere. So what I did was I tested some files on the old graphics card. I'm going to do it on the new one. And I am hopefully going to provide with you some actual numbers to see if the value of the very high price of this graphics card is worth it for you. We're going to kick things off by taking a look at three renderers that leverage the GPU. We're going to take a look at Cycles in Blender, Arnold in Maya, and Substance 3D Stager. To start, we're going to hop right into Blender here. So this is a scene that was created by Barack Gok, a fantastic artist who gave this scene to the Academy of Animated Art to be used in a lighting challenge. This is all Barack's work. I am just using it for this example because I just think it's a lovely image that's a really good indication of what a good final product is. Okay, so our benchmark, what we're looking for is 7 minutes, 46.5 seconds. That was on the 2080 Ti. So let's see how much faster this is. To do that, I'm going to pull up my little, I'm um, gonna use lonely screen to pull up the stopwatch on my phone. And I'm gonna start this the same time I click render image. So let's get after it. Okay, so six minutes, 23 seconds versus seven minutes, 46 seconds. We're looking at about a 25%, if my math is right off the top of my head, reduction in time. That's good, but that's not really like moving the needle for me. Uh, I was expecting it actually to be a little bit faster than that. So let's take a look. We'll keep an open mind here. Let's, let's take a look at some of the other applications. Okay, next up we have Maya and Arnold. So for this one, I wanted to focus in on more of like a true interior scene, just to get a real sense of, because interior scenes can be render intensive, lots of rays bouncing around. So I really wanted to take a look at this. Uh, so I put this scene together inspired by some horror movie basement creepy stuff with these pink walls. Um, I, I had an intention of like finishing this and actually making this look like more grungy and beat up and whatever, but I don't know if I'm actually gonna finish it. We'll see, not the point here. The point is just to test the render time. So our render time that we're shooting for is 23 minutes and 11 seconds. Arnold, with this new Gravis card, let's see what you can do. Let's go ahead and get the app fired up here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Arnold and render. Wow, okay, so this scene clocked in at two minutes and I was looking at the Arnold time, 56 seconds, 57 seconds based on my timer. That is a difference of a lot. So 23 minutes down to about three minutes is really substantial. So you can render about seven frames in the time that you could render one before, which is huge if you're talking about animation. So, all right, graphics card, I think you won that round. Uh, that's, that's a pretty impressive one. Let's just take a look at one more render engine. All right, next up we have Substance 3D Stager. So this file is something that I used at another tutorial on my YouTube channel where I created some 3D models in Illustrator, brought them into Stager, added some lovely subsurface textures to them, and created this final render. So this render took, uh, let's see, 48 minutes and 32 seconds. I really cranked up the settings and really let the subsurface do its thing. I'm curious if this graphics card can reduce that. So we saw a really good result out of Maya and Arnold. We saw an average-ish, below average, uh, less than overwhelming, less than impressive performance out of Blender and Cycle. So let's take a look and see what we can get out of uh, uh, Stager. So we rendered it with the high preset before. We've got that all set up here. We'll just make sure to save it as a different file type so it doesn't overwrite what I did before. Make sure we've got our little timer ready to go. And let's fire it up. All right, so there we go. We have clocked in at about 12 minutes and nine seconds on the official stager time. I had 12.12. 12. Um, 
This is in comparison to 48 minutes, 30 seconds. So we're looking at about a quarter of the amount of time. This is pretty impressive, right? Like this is pretty good, a little bit faster, uh, really is gonna make us a lot more efficient, I think, in our workflow. And again, this is just a rough estimates here. So like I'm doing screen recording here. I didn't screen record in the other one. So I'm guessing that the differences might be a little bit higher than this, but this is pretty good. So two out of the three GPU based renders really gave us a strong improvement. Now I wanna take a look at some workflow stuff. So let's take a look at what this looks like as we're working in Substance Painter. All right, next up we have Substance Painter. And for that, we're gonna be taking a look at this fantastic scene called Poker Puss. Uh, this was originally designed by Disney's Chris Ayers and created by Sarah Tarr. So she did all the modeling work for this. Um, this is also a model and lighting challenge that's available to you at the Academy of Animated Art. I'll put the link down below in the comments if you want to get this asset. Um, it's all textured in real life, but I just have the untextured version for now um, just to show you the process here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be baking out some mesh maps. So for those that don't know, uh, Substance Painter has this process of baking mesh maps that basically runs an analysis of your 3D model in order to create some additional imagery and some um, procedural effects inside of Substance Painter. But it can be a little bit of a time consuming process. So this is a little bit different than the rendering that we saw before. This is more of like a workflow thing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the dialog box here. And the settings I had, I, I, crank, I cranked them up a little bit. And this is generally what I kind of use. So 4K uh, image maps, I did a subsampling of four by four. Uh, inside each one of the ambient occlusion curvature, anything that gives me a secondary raise option, I crank that all the way up to 256. And I went ahead and checked all the maps that were possible. So this is everything and anything that can be baked down. The last time I did this inside of Painter using the 2080 Ti, we're looking at a time of four minutes and five seconds. So I'm curious to see if this speeds that up because that would be a big one. Um, but this one, there actually isn't an internal clock here. So I'm really going to rely on my little stopwatch method. So hopefully, uh, so it's not going to be like scientifically perfect, but it'll give us a really good idea of how much faster this is. All right, so let's go ahead and kick it off. All right, so we clocked in at just a nose under three minutes. We'll just call that three minutes. Uh, again, the original time was 4.05. So we're dropping it from four minutes down to three minutes. Again, about a 25% reduction in uh, the amount of time to bake out these mesh maps. Good, you know, not super overly impressive, maybe not worth the cost, but definitely something to consider when evaluating this graphics card. All right, so next up we have Nuke. Nuke is a node-based compositing software package that's often used in film, uh, visual effects shots for commercials, animation, basically every Film every project that I worked on, uh, the required uh, moving image used Nuke in the process. Um, so Nuke, in, in this particular case, uh, for this shot, there's a, a series of images that are brought in, different passes, different render settings. Uh, they're all pieced together to make this final image of a, with seeming like a car driving very close to this nice young man who's sitting on, the, sitting on this couch. So this is also available at the Academy of Animated Art. Uh, these are part of the lighting assets. This is uh, originally created by Kisle Kumari. And uh, I just went ahead and, and, and did some lighting and um, compositing work just to showcase that you can create some mood in a scene and some action and animation without actually having 3D models. So this was just like two spotlights that were zipping past this character to kind of simulate the look of a car passing somebody. Um, and so for this, I just wanted to kind of uh, render out this composite because uh, these can get pretty labor intensive. And for this, um, even though this was a 60 frame animation, I went ahead and just rendered out 400 frames to get a better idea of the um, amount of time it would take to render. And just um, because in my head, it was a larger sample size. It may not be the best idea in the world, but, um, but that's what we're going with. Okay, so for that, I am just going to render out a JPEG sequence. And when I did this with the 2080 Ti, we were looking at a time of 12 minutes and 16 seconds. So let's see how long this one takes. Again, uh, same deal here in that there's, I don't think there's like an actual timer in the software that will tell me, um, and that will uh, tell me when things are uh, finished, but let's go ahead and just say render. We'll make sure that, so we should rely on a little stopwatch here. So let's go ahead and get that fired up. Hey, we are about to get this underway. We'll see how this graphics card does in this 400 frame nuke animation. Here we go. All 
All right, so that is complete. We went from 12 minutes and 16 seconds down to a process that finishes in three minutes and 28 seconds. Again, about a quarter of the amount of time uh, it would take to render this out. So a pretty substantial difference. And if you're somebody who's going to be rendering and working a lot in Nuke and in processing a lot of iterations, this could make a pretty big difference to you in how you evaluate this product. Okay, and next up, we're gonna take a look inside of Adobe Premiere in a software that's gonna be used for your editing needs. Last up, we have Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, so this is when you're done with all your image creation and you're ready to assemble everything into a lovely final edit with text overlays and stuff. How much does this graphics card actually help you out in this capacity? So this was a video that I put together for the YouTube channel. This was just something that described kind of what Substance is um, and did just some of the different tools that I was using um, for a Substance Stager course. So you can check this out there. But we wanna see how fast this renders out. So originally this took about a minute and 55 seconds. And now I'm going to test it out here with the 4090 and see what we get. All right, let's go ahead and render it out here on your mark, get set, go. All right, that render is complete. We've dropped from a minute 55 down to about a minute 26. And that it represents about like another, you know, 25% reduction in time. So that's pretty cool. Again, if you're doing elaborate, complex, uh, you know, edit, editing shots and, and that's your jam, uh, you know, having a 25% reduction in render times could be very, very valuable to you. So it all depends on your individual workflow. All right, so that's it in terms of the individual software. Now let's take a look at all of them and get an overall idea of the time savings with this graphics card. All right, so we got our finals numbers back, and as you'd expect, the more powerful graphics card did perform better across the board. Uh, it was faster in every benchmark test that we did. Uh, it did a little bit better in some areas than I even expected. So Arnold and Maya knocked it out of the park. Same thing with Substance Sager and Nuke. Painter and Premiere did well. Uh, that's about the increase that I was thinking about, like maybe 30% or so. Uh, Cycles of Blender was a little bit underwhelming, but for me in my workflow, I think this does provide a nice um, improvement for me, specifically because I've already purchased it and cat's kind of out of the bag, it's already in my machine. Uh, but hopefully you could use these numbers for your own uh, research and purchasing going forward. All right, so there was some benchmark testing. Hopefully this gives you a little more clarity on what you wanna do going forward. If you have any questions, or need any more information, just drop them in the comments down below. And I look forward to seeing you next time when we will definitely be getting in something more artistic.